Well, hey there, mama, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode number 119. I'm Emily McDermott, and I am here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. Well, it is almost the end of April now, and maybe you are thinking back to those New Year's resolutions from so long ago (laughs) about how you are finally going to declutter and get your house in order, and it hasn't happened yet. It seems like summer is right around the corner with the kids at home. If you are feeling this way, today's episode is definitely for you because the things I hear most from all of you is that you don't have the time, the energy, the motivation, the support, the knowledge of where to get started, and it's holding you back. So today we are going to dive into three mindset hacks that are going to help motivate you to get started with your decluttering journey today. This is both a tough love and also a very tactical episode. So what do you say? Grab that notebook and pen and let's dive into today's episode. Hey there, mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home calendar and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to let you know about an awesome collection that I am part of called the Living on Less Collection. And my five C's of decluttering mini course, which retails for $12 is actually part of this collection, but you can get that course as well as 14 other amazing resources for only $5 total. This is not a drill. (laughs) And these resources have to do with decluttering, organizing, financial goals, and more. You have six months to use what you want. You only need to redeem what you want. So this is through my friend Stephanie at Mama Shark, and I would love for you to take advantage of it. So go ahead and check out the show notes because today is the last day and I hope that you can take advantage of it. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into these three mindset hacks. Now, I personally struggle not so much with decluttering. Obviously, that's why you're listening to me. (laughs) But I struggle more with nutrition and health related things. And I have found that no matter what area of life it is, there are similar excuses or reasons for them all. And I think that one of the main mindset shifts that I've had to make and I would recommend that you make on this decluttering journey sooner rather than later, is that you have to actually make the decision that whatever this is matters more than your excuses because you believe in the ROI, the return on investment for your resources. So anytime you are making a change in your life, it is an investment of your time and your energy, but you have to ask yourself, what is that return on investment going to be? Because the excuses that I hear from everyone, and I make these excuses too, when it comes to other things are, I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I'm not motivated. I have too much going on. Uh, It's hard for me to focus. I don't have any support from my family members or others, and I have no idea where to start. Does that just list all of your excuses, (laughs) not trying to call you out today, but these excuses can hold you back really from anything. And so we have to look at them for what they are excuses that there might be some truth to them, but they don't have to be anything that hold us back necessarily and ask ourselves, are we willing 
to invest the time and energy needed on the front end so that we can enjoy the return on investment on the back end. Because what I found with decluttering is the return on investment for my time and energy decluttering is double or triple or more of what I invest. So I want you to just think for a moment, and if you want to write this down, feel free. What do you want in your life and in your home? What do you want more of? The things that came to mind for me were peace, focus, connection, joy. You can probably add some things to the list. Well, the clutter around you and in your mind, it is blocking you from the things that you want. It's either physically blocking you because it's just taking up your home or mentally and emotionally blocking you. And what I will always remind you, my dear mama friend, what I will always remind you is that you are worth more than anything in your home and the things that you want, that peace and focus and connection and joy, that is worth more than anything around you. Your children's memories of growing up in your home are worth more. And you have to believe that you're worth more and those memories are worth more in order to move forward. I cannot convince you of it. You have to make the decision and have the belief that goes behind that decision. So that is really our first mindset shift, making the decision that decluttering matters more than our excuses because we believe in the return on investment for those resources. Okay, our second mindset shift is that we have to rise above our limiting beliefs and the stories we're telling ourselves that keep us holding on to what we don't need. Here are just a few and feel free to write down any of them that resonate with you. I'm just not an organized person. I can never get a system to stick. No one ever helps me. If I let go of that thing, I will regret it. If I let go of it, it's going to negatively impact some sort of relationship. And the I can get organized when dot, dot, dot. And there's a circumstance that needs to change. Maybe it's when you have more time or when the kids are out of the house or it could be in any number of things, but that's the arrival fallacy, which is that we're going to be happy when dot, dot, dot. So we're going to take these limiting beliefs and these stories that we're telling ourselves, and we are going to pick them up and hold them up to the light and ask ourselves whether these things are actually true. Are they actually true? And for the most part, they probably aren't. There might be some aspect of truth to them, but they are not completely true. So then we want to replace and reframe with another belief. So one thing that you could do when it comes to your excuses from number one or these limiting beliefs and stories from number two is that you could just take index cards and you can put your excuse on one side and your reframe on the other. So let's go ahead and give an example of this. Let's see here. I'm looking at the list here. (laughs) Let's go with this one. If I let go of my grandmother's china, it's going to negatively impact my relationship with my mother. Let's do that as an example. So is that true? Well, not necessarily. It is our perception of what might be the case, that it's going to negatively impact that relationship. But what we could do for our reframing is that our grandmother, whether she's passed or not, as well as our mother, wants us to be happy. She wants us to experience peace and connection and joy and love. And if this physical thing is preventing us from being able to experience that, we can let it go knowing that they want these better things for us. So we don't have to hold on to things out of guilt. So that's just one example of how we can actually start to reframe and replace these limiting beliefs. Because if we don't believe that we can do this, that we can make this change, then no number of podcast episodes or anything that you might get from me or other people on you know social media or whatever, none of it is going to matter because you have to actually believe and retrain your brain to know that this is possible for you. So number two, again, we wanna rise over our limiting beliefs and the stories we're telling ourselves that keep us holding on to what we don't need. 
And the third and final mindset shift we need to make is that about motivation. We have to recognize that motivation (laughs) is this mythical unicorn, right? It's not necessarily real. It's not something that we have to read something or listen to a podcast and then all of a sudden we're going to be motivated, even a podcast like mine (laughs) that is trying to spur you to action. We are real moms living in the real world with real constraints and most of what we have to do as moms dare I say, we don't necessarily want to do. (laughs) We don't necessarily want to do the laundry and the cooking and the dishes and the picking up and all of these things. We don't necessarily have that motivation to do it. And decluttering is no different. So my favorite habits guru, James Clear, has some awesome advice about motivation. I'm going to link to a couple of things in the show notes, but he likes to use Stephen Pressfield's definition of motivation. And the paraphrasing is this, at some point, the pain of not doing it becomes greater than the pain of doing it. So we, as humans, we try to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And if we perceive that decluttering is painful because it takes this time and energy and there's decision making and everything, we're going to avoid it or think, well, I'll just do it when I'm motivated. But as James Clear explains, motivation often comes after starting, not before. Action produces momentum. And there is this concept in chemistry called activation energy, which is the energy that is required from a chemical change. And I love how James Clear talks about this when it comes to action and habits. So as you can imagine, if I decided today, I want to run a marathon, well, the activation energy required for me to start training and doing that is very big because it's a very big goal. But if I said, I want to clear out this drawer for five minutes, then that won't take as long. So this is why in the Facebook group, tinyurl.com forward slash moms overcoming overwhelm, we do challenges that are only up to 15 minutes. We look at one area, one drawer. We start in easy places like our car. We want to make it so easy you can't say no. And when it comes to having that motivation, and when we talk about that activation energy, there's this concept of catalyst. And a catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction and makes it easier for this reaction to occur. And so you can think about starting a fire, you know, you need to start with the kindling. And so we want to, when we're looking at, okay, we want to be more motivated to declutter, what is a trigger or a catalyst that could motivate me? Maybe it's music. And I actually just created a Spotify decluttering playlist, which I will link in the show notes. Maybe you can listen to that or a podcast episode while you declutter. Maybe you need accountability, whether that be our Facebook group or to do coaching with me. So you can go to simplebyemmy.com forward slash coaching, or maybe you need to schedule decluttering in your schedule like an appointment. So you make sure that you are actually doing it. You need to understand what sort of trigger or catalyst will help you spur you to action. So those are the three mindset shifts that I think are really helpful when it comes to not only decluttering, but other areas in your life that you want to change. So again, to review, number one, you have to make the decision that decluttering matters more than your excuses because you believe in the return on investment for what you are investing with your time and energy. Number two, you want to rise above your limiting beliefs and the stories that you're telling yourself that keep you holding on, maybe using that note card idea that I shared. And number three, recognizing that motivation is kind of a myth and it comes from starting, not before. And so we want to think about our activation energy that is required. So we want to start small And we also want to think about what trigger or catalyst is going to motivate us to make the changes that we need. On Thursday, we're going to be talking to Lauren White from the Intentional Edit podcast. And we're going to talk about her weekend routines to help prepare for the week so that she has time for what matters most. And I can't wait to see you there. See you on Thursday. Bye for now. If you like today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact. But 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. 
And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. In Apple Podcasts, scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you.